Now, do you know what God did for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? Any idea? Um, he, oh gosh. I don't think I know. Mm -mm. I, I don't know. No. Would you mind telling well, me? <laughs> who can help you? Nobody. Buddhism can't help you. Islam can't help you. Hinduism can't help you. Being religious can't help you. Being good can't help you. You are hopeless. The only thing can help you is God's mercy, and that was extended through the cross, through the Savior. There's no one on the face of the earth that can help you. The Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. That's why Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. You have no choice. There's only one parachute being offered, and that's the Savior Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus of Nazareth, perfect sinless man who gave his life on a cross. Now you probably know that, but you may not know the legal implications. God's a judge, the Bible paints him as the ultimate judge, the habitation of justice. You and I are criminals called sinners because we violated his law, the Ten Commandments. We're heading for God's prison, a place called hell without parole, we're under the death sentence, but Jesus stepped in and paid our fine in full. If you're in court, even though you're guilty, if someone pays your fine, the judge can say, well, this person's guilty, but someone's paid his fine, he's out of here, and he can do that which is just. Well, the Bible says God can let you live forever because Jesus paid the fine in full on that cross. When he was on the cross, he cried out, it is finished on the cross. It was his last words. In other words, the debt has been paid. That means God can legally grant you the gift of everlasting life. And then he died and then rose from the dead three days later. And what you have to do to have your case dismissed, to walk out of God's courtroom and be gifted with everlasting life because God's merciful, is repent of your sins and trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. If you ever jump out of a plane, don't just believe in the parachute, put your faith in it, put your trust in it. And that's what you must do with a Savior. You repent and trust in Christ. You don't have to get religious or do good works. It's a free gift of God. And the second you do that, Andrew, God will dismiss every sin, all those secret sins, the imaginations of your heart, those sexual ones you thought no one saw. God saw them and you're stirred up as wrath. If you stand in front of a judge and say, Judge, I raped that woman, very serious crime, but I want to tell you, I do a lot of good things. Just to say, what are you talking about? You're not going to be judged by what you do that's good. You're going to be judged on the crime of rape. You're going to prison, buddy. The judge won't judge you on your good works, and God's exactly the same. Good works are irrelevant. We can't bribe God to forgive our sins and let us live. All we can do is throw ourselves on the mercy of the judge and say, God, forgive me. And the Bible says God is rich in mercy, and he provided a Savior. And he'll forgive you in a second because of what Jesus did on the cross. It's called grace, and it's amazing. The Bible says God is rich in mercy, and He can save you by His grace, His unmerited favor. 